There was a really traumatic period of time in my life where all these horrible things happened kind of at the same time. And it really shook me up for quite a while. Family members were passing, relationships were ending, job situations were really rough, car accidents, just all these horrific, frustrating, terrifying things. And I realized I had crippling anxiety because I kept thinking that more terrible things were going to follow because they kept happening all at once. It literally affected me so bad to the point where I felt so dissociated from my own body and mind. I felt like death. I was so depressed and upset and just sad. Nothing felt good. Like literally anything in my life that gave me any ounce of joy previously was useless. It was so pointless for me to think about. I just got to this phase where I was like, what's the point of any of this? Nothing is helping and nothing actually helped until I realized I wasn't giving myself enough self-love so what actually happens to yourself when you stop treating yourself so poorly and actually treat yourself with the same love that you give to people you care about you could start by checking in on yourself think of the same way that you treat a significant other or a sick parent did you drink water did you eat good food today did you get enough rest the types of questions that you would ask that person are so easy to direct toward them because you love them and you care about them. But oftentimes we forget to ask ourselves those questions and actually take intentional action based off of those questions. So sit back and really think to yourself, did I take care of myself today? Did I laugh enough? Did I do something that I really, really enjoy? Am I filling my own cup? And even just that act alone, is so powerful to help reframe and shift the lens at which you're pointing your love outward. A lot of people miss the mark on this one because they're so forgetful or even unintentional about where they're directing their energy and focus. So by shifting this and asking yourself, what can I do to love myself more today? Am I eating properly? Am I drinking enough water? Am I getting good rest and nourishment? Am I laughing a lot? Am I doing fun things that I really, really care about. This makes a massive, massive difference in the ways in which you're able to care for yourself and just provide healthy self-love. Another thing you can do is actually check yourself every single time you're thinking negatively. So a negative thought comes into your head. Well, I'm useless. I'm stupid. I lost the relationship because of this. I lost the job because of ABC, XYZ. We all have these thoughts. We all have these perceptions and beliefs sometimes. But what happens is there's a big difference in how you continue to think about those things. And oftentimes the more healthy person will actually stop and say, hey, why am I thinking like this? Why am I going down this negative rabbit hole? Because these thoughts actually don't serve me. So the next time you're feeling really negative about something, actually try and put that wall up and police yourself a bit and say, I'm doing it again. I'm thinking thoughts that actually don't serve me. I'm programming my brain to think very harshly and negatively about me. And this isn't helpful from what my end goal is. I wanna be fulfilled. I wanna be joyful. I wanna live a life of happiness and a wider range of healthy emotions. I wanna experience feeling alive. And oftentimes, like I described earlier in the issues that I was facing at that period of time in my life, I felt like a ghost. I wasn't feeling anything. It was super empty and void of any sort of enjoyment of any kind. So do this and it'll kind of be this checks and balances system that's pretty helpful and powerful. So on top of that, another thing you can do is actually think of the love languages. So many of us have heard of the love languages. We say, oh, what are your love languages? How do you give love? How do you receive love? People may be very interested in talking about that in the context of relationships, but oftentimes people don't think about them in the context of self-love. So for example, say your love languages are giving gifts. You love giving gifts to people. You love receiving gifts from other people. Well, one thing you can do to help foster and cultivate the sense of self-love is to buy yourself a gift. 
Maybe there's something that you've been really interested in buying for a long time, but you haven't actually decided to get it yourself or no one else got it for you. Maybe you are huge on acts of service. Clean up your room, organize the garage, do something in your car that you've been meaning to do for months and months. Like do something for yourself based on the love language that you most resonate with. It's amazing what these little things can do if you really channel it into those categories that give you such happy, healthy, fulfilling love. Try this and play around with the different love languages. You'd be amazed what happens when instead of pointing that outward, you turn it and point it at yourself. So what if you don't love yourself? Or what if you've never been given love so you don't know how to give love? The heaviest and hardest conversations we fear more than anything are oftentimes the ones we need to have the most. These are the things we need to talk about with ourselves. Because the more you think negatively about yourself, the worse you'll feel. There's this part of our brains called the default mode network, and it's responsible for your self identity, how you see yourself in the world. So if you constantly tell yourself bad things, your brain is literally going to form neural connections around that and say, this is how we feel. This is how we see the world. This is who we are in this world. There's literal neuroscience behind this. So the more you can shift that and get outside of that to give yourself self love, you'll be amazed at what can actually happen from that. 50% of women on dating apps use them to fulfill some sort of emotional need outside of finding an intimate relationship. So many men are desperate for some sort of positive, healthy encouragement in their lives. What if we just gave ourselves a little self-love? Consider these practical tips and apply them in your daily life. I guarantee that over a long period of time, so much of this stuff will shift for you and you'll actually start feeling better. I know it doesn't seem like it, and I know that some days it just feels like absolute nothingness. I've been there, I've experienced it, and it's horrifying. But I promise you, there are so many things you can do to truly love yourself. As always, thank you for watching. I appreciate you for hanging out. Remember to take care of yourself, take care of those around you, and for all things psychology to help you think, feel, and perform better, stay tuned right here on Psychology of Living.